I did a video on pregabalin. Right, I my background, I read medical literature and I'm a junior chemist. Um, and I test drugs on myself. Um, I've got my own set of drugs that I like, which I take. But they don't fuck up my life. Like, I, I, I still present myself okay. Like, there are times where I pushed it too far, don't get me wrong. Like, there are times. But, overall, I'm alright. The other worst thing I do is dig into my medication too much. And then run out. And withdraw from benzos. And it is horrific. Like, it's the worst thing in the world. It's the worst feeling you could possibly have. Like, it plays with your head. Like, you think things, you get paranoid. You think things are out to get you. You you start seeing things out of the corner of your eye. And you start looking, darting about. And you go mad until you get a new dose of it. Sometimes they have to give you an emergency prescription if you've run out. Because they can't let you just have a seizure and die. Like, it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse as time goes on. You can't sleep. Like, you, you go crazy. Like, you could end up having three days without sleep. Like, by that point, you've lost it. Like, um, you lie in bed, you have lots of showers because that's the only thing that seems to calm it down. And I've never gone three days without them. I've gone two, and that's enough. That's enough to feel the pain. I've had benzo withdrawal and opiate withdrawal at the same time. And it is got to be the worst feeling in the world. Apart from maybe losing a loved one. Like next is benzo and uh, opiate withdrawal. Like you fucking feel awful. Like you feel like you're going to die. Like and you could. That's the problem. That's why you're so scared. Is because you could die. Like the benzo, the opiate withdrawals making you feel ill and like weak and painful, but the benzos fucking with your head. So like you could end up committing suicide or something because you you're not thinking rationally. That's why you've got to if you've been on benzos for a long time, you've got to regulate how many you're taking, take it as prescribed. I know sometimes you need to dig into more because you're feeling anxious or something like that, but you've got to control yourself. Coming from me, fucking I fucking fucked up loads of times recently, but I I I am gonna be good this time. Uh, pre gabs are very good for opiate withdrawal and benzo withdrawal because they hit two birds with one stone because it's just they do something with the GABA in your brain that I can't explain, but. It releases so much GABA that you... That's what it's called, GABA penin and pregabalin. Um, it's for mainly for nerve pain, but it has been used for depression. Um, <clears throat> there, it's a miracle drug. Like, but people abuse it, it gets a bad name, and then it gets blacklisted, and people don't give it out. When I get a prescription for it, but I get a very small amount, too small, it's, it's not enough for anyone, like 75 milligrams, it's tiny, I get 150 a day, I, I don't take them every day, I take them all in one go, because I don't want to become addicted to another drug. <clears throat> um, the Xanax, I sometimes I go overboard with them, I'm not going to lie, like... I, I, I've i taken 90 in one day, like, and I get the proper ones as well. The way I know they're real is the taste. Like, when I chew my benzos, I I know the diazepam taste, I know the alprazolam taste. And other ones, uh, clonazepam doesn't really taste of anything. It kind of has a weird, milky kind of taste, like... I can't really describe it, it's like, a kind of like, it's almost like you're chewing a mint, like, but it's not minty, if that makes sense. That's what clonazepam tastes like. Um, you just taste like you're chewing something that could, nearly has flavour, but it doesn't. Like, that's what clonazepam tastes like. Or clonopin, as it's called in the States. <clears throat> anyway, 
I'm going to make my own supplement capsules. I need volunteers who are depressed at the minute, people going through depression, who are not on antidepressants, and I cannot stress that enough. I've done a TikTok about this. I need people that are genuinely feeling down I've got something that the the medical experts won't tell you about because it's all about money. They want people on prescription drugs because most people pay for their prescriptions and they earn a lot of money for people doing that. And I don't pay for prescriptions because I'm on a benefit. So I just click H on the thing and it's paid for. So I'm lucky. Um, otherwise I'd have to pay stupid amounts at, at twice a week I'd have to pay £12 something or £14 something stupidly expensive people go in for a fucking inhaler and they have to pay like £12.50 for it it's a rip off like I'm just glad I'm on this benefit like I don't know what I'd do without it <clears throat> anyway these supplement capsules I'm not going to say what it is but yeah, it's natural. The only side effects is it can make your stomach a bit weak, like in some people. That's the only side effect I've actually seen doing my research. So I'm going to order it from China, make the capsules, send them out to people. I need like three test subjects. And we'll do a two week course, right, where you take two capsules a day. Two 200 milligram capsules, so you're taking 400 milligrams a day. And see after two weeks if your mood has improved. Because I might be onto something, I might win a fucking award. Like, for something that's been out for years and years, but no one fucking takes because no one tells people you can take this supplement and it works as well as an ideally depressant. Antidepressants don't work as well as this. This is a supplement that boosts serotonin naturally. It's it's mind-blowing shit. So yeah, get on me.